George! George! You gotta come back with me! Huh? Back where? Back to the future in the time machine. The Time Machine, released in 1960 and is directed by George Powell, who has also directed such films like Tom Thumb, Atlantis The Lost Continent, The Wonderful World of the Brothers Grimm, and Seven Faces for Dr. Leo. And this film is starring Rob Taylor, Alan Young, Yvette Miamu, Sebastian Kobot, and Whit Bissell. And the reason why we're talking about The Time Machine today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my longtime subscribers and contributors of this channel name the stars thank you very much for the recommendation if any of you out there also want to be like name the stars and help support me and contribute to this channel you can select the paypal link that is on the home page of my youtube channel any size donation will do and you can attach your movie recommendation with your donation and if i have access to it i will watch it review it and give you a little shout out just like what i did with name the stars here and name the stars this is the first time i'm watching this version of this movie i'm pretty sure the only time i've been been introduced to this story or this novella that was written by H.G. Wells was the remake version starring Guy Pierce that came out I want to say in like the early 2000s only watched that once and I can't remember a lot of the things from that movie so I don't know how accurate it is to the book or to the remakeness of this movie so Hey, this one's better! Rob Taylor plays H. George Wells, who is a- Wait a minute, the lead character's name is H.G. Wells? For real? H.G. Wells wrote himself as the protagonist of the book and of the story? Wow, narcissistic much? Who is a famous inventor in the year 1900, and he has claimed to invented a time machine that can travel through time. And while his colleagues don't believe him and just shun him off, he hops into his time machine to prove himself correct and to travel centuries into the future. However, George becomes disappointed by what he sees, because instead of his civilization and mankind advancing in technology and in knowledge, he sees the human race diminish back into its early form where they cannot think for themselves. And how sad is that for you to be an inventor, for you to be a scientist who's constantly thinking about theories and the next thing, the next stage of human evolution or the next technological advancement that is going to improve the earth and improve the human race so that it just lives on for millennia. How sad is it to go millennia into the future just to see that human beings have been diminished to basically some other person's food because apparently cannibalism is a thing that's gonna happen you know three million years into the future which I wouldn't put it past us we kill each other all the time it's one of the earliest things that we as humans love to do so I mean that makes sense why wouldn't we be doing this three million years into the future but I felt bad for him as he went further into the future he sees things in World War one and then he goes a little bit into the future and it's World War two goes a little bit further into the future and this is where the theories of the space race and the Cold War and all the nuclear weapons races and all that shit all you're seeing is that the human race just loves to fight each other the farther that you go that's one of the great things about sci-fi writing and sci-fi films is that they take ideas of what's going on in the world today and shows us the potential of where we are going as a species or where technology is going and where we could possibly end up. And for this film being in the 1960s with the technological advancements in film, you know, everything is very limited in here, but I think what we get from this film is actually pretty groundbreaking. All of the movie screens in the background with everything speeding up and all of the time lapses to everything, the costume design, the production design of the time machine itself, it all looks pretty crisp and it looks great. I'm not sure I'm fully buying their concept and their rules they've established when it comes to time travel. That's one of the big problems that any movie dealing with time travel has to overcome. They have to set out the rules of how their theory of time travel is because of course we don't know how time travel works. We know that time is relative, right? So you have all these different theories. If you look at Back to the Future, if you go back and you change something in your past, it's going to change your future. If you look at something like 
Endgame or the Flash movie that just came out earlier this year, if you go back and something changes in the past that you just went back to that shifts the entire timeline into a fulcrum and you get a brand new future and you get a brand new past. Here, this movie is not obsessed with going back into the past and changing things. This guy is obsessed with going into the future to see where we end up and how things progress on this earth. And his theory is talking about this machine that somehow can travel through time. He never explained that, and I'll get to that in a second. But he talks about how this machine, when it goes into the future, it's occupying the exact same space, just at a different point of time. So it is traveling, but it is staying in the same space. And why his colleagues couldn't understand that, I don't know. It's a pretty simple concept. And this film came out in 1960, so our knowledge about space travel and really just anything going on in space was still very limited, as it is today, even though it has advanced from the 1960s, our knowledge is still pretty limited, but we do know that the planets, the universe, is expanding. That means everything is expanding. So if an object is occupying a space at a certain point of time, if you travel a hundred years into the future, the position of where the Earth is in regards to the universe is going to be over here, yet your little machine is still occupying this same space. So I think once they realize that, that's where their minds would really explode, but we don't get to that complex idea. Plus, the Earth is constantly rotating around the sun as it's projecting out into the black void that is space. So who knows if the Earth is going to be in the exact position around the sun at that given point of time. So <laughs> time travel and space and mathematics is all very fascinating. But my biggest advice for any of you going into any time traveling movie is to just kind of sit back listen to the film's rules of how they're establishing time travel accept it and then move on this is a movie it's supposed to be fun so just sit back and relax. I will say this film is not very inclusive though this is not a diverse cast apparently there are no people well, first, on Earth at this point, who are not white, but then also when you travel millions of years into the future, apparently everyone is just all white with blonde hair. Who still speak English, too. That was another question that I had. He traveled into the future, he meets up this girl, this pretty little blonde girl who's in this pink little dress, this pink little getup, and he's talking with her, and she's talking right back in plain English. <laughs> We're still speaking this broken language here three million years into the future? Okay, I'm gonna call bullshit on that. And then we get to points too where Weena, this woman's name is Weena, where she's asking George Wells, girls in your time, are they pretty? How do they wear their hair up? <laughs> Why do you care? Is that still a thing that you're worried about here three million years in the future? I didn't think so, since all of you are basically cooker-cutter-ish people against each other. But yet she understands the concept of beauty and what looks good and fashion and hairstyles. <laughs> No. And apparently, and I didn't know this, if you move into the mountains, if you move into caves, after like several hundred years of you living in there, your skin will turn blue and your teeth will get super sharp and then you'll develop a taste for human flesh because that's what happens, you know because reasons. I get it, it's a sci-fi adventure. Again, you just sit back and you go along with it. It's something for our hero to overcome in the climax of this movie. I get it, <laughs> but it's, it's a stretch when you think about it in the long history of humankind. Like, okay, fine. I guess that's what happens when you go into the caves. You just become a blue gullum person eating peeper. <laughs> Rod Taylor is our hero. He plays George Wells, and I think he does a fine job of being that square jump person who is the smartest person in the room. I kept thinking he was Bradley Cooper. The man looks exactly like Bradley Cooper in this movie. I couldn't wrap my head around it. And as he's traveling through time, he's narrating it, so as he stops, we can hear his thoughts talk about how the mannequin in the window across the street keeps changing her dresses and keeps changing in fashion. But then we get to moments where he's in peril, there's like volcanic lava that's gonna encompass him, and he's still narrating and talking and telling the audience, I was frightened! I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I went too fast. I'm still scared. And I don't know, that aspect started to bother me with him telling us how he was feeling. 
I don't need for you to tell me how you're feeling. I could probably just see that in your performance and in your facial expressions. I don't need to be spoon-fed everything, narrator sir. But the character's name is George Wells, so in the book, I haven't read the book, but I would assume it's from George Wells' perspective, so... <laughs> Whatever, if George Wells wants to talk, I guess, we'll just listen. I do like the concept of the machine. It looks like an elaborate, like, Santa Claus sleigh. <laughs> But I wish they would have gone into how this device is able to travel through time. Let alone just like the idea of traveling through time in general. How is this device capable of moving to the fourth dimension? It's a three-dimensional device, which is what they were talking about, the difference in dimensions. So how is this three-dimensional device capable of moving into the fourth dimension? How? He comes upstairs with a little mock-up with a little like miniature model of his device. And he says, if I flip this switch, it'll travel a hundred years in the future. It'll travel through time. Okay. How? And he explains, well, by pulling this lever forward. That's how it goes in time. And again, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, how? What mechanics does this device have to where it's able to go into the fourth dimension? It would be me taking this TV remote and saying, okay, so here is the time traveling device. And if I press this button, I'll travel forward in time. Okay. How? And why would you also build a replica, a miniature model replica of your time machine that could also travel in time? Are you taking Geico with you? The little, the little gecko from Geico? Or is he traveling in time with you to sell car insurance? Hello everyone, in the year 3063, I'm from the year 1900. And have you heard of Geico and how he can save you car insurance? This was 1960, so I need to keep telling myself to just go easy on the science and the mechanics of this stuff and just sit back, relax, and enjoy the time traveling adventure, damn it, Caleb. But there are aspects like that <laughs> that I'm just asking questions. You're telling me that, that that's what it does. Okay, how? Why does it do that? What did you put into this device to make it travel into the fourth dimension? And you never answer that, so I'm a little irritated that we never got explanation. It just does. That's why. For reasons, let's move on. The Time Machine is a fun science fiction adventure. I haven't read the book, of course, so I can't compare it to that, and I've only seen the remake version of The Time Machine with Guy Pierce once, and I've, I've completely blocked that out of my mind, so I can't compare as to what happens in that movie. So just going off of this film, I think it is fun. I think for this being from the 1960s, it's actually pretty impressive with all the visual effects and how they pulled them off. And I think it's a good representation of how we saw time and how we saw space in the 1960s. Could this movie be remade today? Yeah, sure, absolutely. The science would have to be improved though, and we would need more explanation as to how the device that you're creating travels to the fourth dimension, even though it's a three-dimensional item. Okay. Okay, I need to get off my soapbox. I'm gonna give the time machine three and a half out of five Blu-rays. I am above average. So guys, have you seen The Time Machine? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I'm release mixed movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.